Hello and welcome. This is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And in this week's training, we're going to be generating QR codes, both for a single product and for an entire item list. We can generate tons and tons of QR codes. I'm going to show you how to do that, how to change the colors, format, size, and everything you need about know about QR codes. We're going to do all that, so let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me today. We've got a lot to cover. We've got a very tall order. In fact, today I want to show you how to generate a QR code from data you have in Excel. Not only that, I want to be able to give you the ability to actually set its own back color, to set its own front color, customize the size, customize the size on the table, and also create an entire list of QR codes based on some data that you have. Not only that, I want to do that all in about 30 minutes. So let's see if we can do that. That's a tall order. I got to get started right away on the, I just want to make sure that you've already subscribed, subscribing, liking, commenting. That's going to help us to make sure we create these videos each and every week for you. I want to bring these to you and I want to make sure you get alerted right when they I create them each and every Tuesday. So make sure you click that notifications icon bell. These trainings are always free. Go ahead and download this application. It's free in the description below if you want to support us. I've got some amazing courses, including the mentorship program. In that mentorship program, I'm going to teach you how to define, design, develop, and deploy your own Excel applications. Basically, taking your Excel skills and bringing them to the forefront, allowing you to make a passive income that you can use for the rest of your life by developing your own applications. I've done that in the past. I want to show you how to do that. That's what we're doing in the mentorship program while I develop an incredible accounting application. So if you like that, check out myexcelmentor.com. All the details are there. I'll also put the links down below. All right, let's get started. So basically what I want to do is I want to be able to click this button and generate tons of QR codes. I want to also create a button here and put a QR code for this particular project product. And what I want to do is I want to customize that. I want to give the user or you, the developer, or your end user the ability to change the size and to change the color, like to have a back color or a front color. And I want to do that using a pop-up color picker. I want to be able to set the size on the form and the size of that QR code in the table. So that's what we want to do. To choose the colors, we're going to be using a color picker. I believe I've got one saved here called the color palette here. That's going to help us choose the color so you'll be able to select the color and have that color appear and customize it. It's a lot to show you. Also, this item information, if this looks familiar, this application was created in a prior training called Mobile Inventory Manager. We're not going to create this form today. We're going to use its functionality, but we won't be creating it. If you want to know how I created it, all you got to do is find the Mobile Inventory Manager on my YouTube channel. Channel, and I go through it in detail in that training video but we're just going to use it as a backdrop today because I want to develop a code let's close that out okay so we've got this so we've got a setup we've got a palette of colors we want to be able to select both the back color and the front color and in the item I want to create an area that we can put that QR code so let's do that right now I'm just going to put a border around it we're going to do very very basic here because I really want to show you what's behind this particular API and how we're going to create this amazing barcode and I'm I'm just going to put a button here and uh, we can actually duplicate this button using control D and I'm going to delete the macro that's associated with it and ungroup it so when we assign the macro just click backspace and that's going to clear all the macros out that has been assigned not only to the individual shapes and the group beyond that now we can ungroup it and I already have a specific icon that's going to help us that we're going to use so let's go ahead and insert that icon this is going to be a quick design there's not much I've got a white one that's going to help us it's kind of big so let's format down to say point two, something nice and small that's even already a little too big for our, and we're gonna change the check called generate QR code, something similar. And uh, let's just create that. We will bring this up to two inches. Uh, no, it's too big. Uh, 1.6 should be sufficient. Okay, so that's nice. And now we'll just, uh, just a small button that's gonna help us generate the, the QR code. And uh, okay, that should be sufficient. Now I'm gonna hold the control and group those and just create a button called generate QR. I already have one 
under the other one so that's fine for now so basically i want to put that qr right here all right so that's all we're going to do it's pretty simple to, and it, what do i want to do i want to generate it based on some data now you can use any data you want okay i'm just going to use the item name it's the simplest so i want to generate data qr code based on this item name and in the item list i'm going to do the same thing i've got a button here already set up so i want to generate uh, based on this name and I want to run through for any QR code that doesn't isn't here or doesn't exist I wanted to generate it. you can generate it based on pretty much anything a link a description There's about 900 character limits or so you want to keep it within that limit But uh, anything less it should be just fine and then the setup screen when user selects the back color or the QR color I want this thing to pop up otherwise I want it to hide So let's just write some code for that and this is called color palette It's just a shape and it's made up of individual rectangles of color and all I'm going to do is take the background color, whatever each of these shapes are, I'm going to bring it into this. I'm going to deter put the color here, and I'm going to determine what number it is and put the number here. So how do we do that? Well, that's in the developers. If you don't have the developers tab open, of course, you can find it located here in the options. And then you just click on the customizer ribbon and then the developers right here. Make sure that is selected. There's also a shortcut to get you into the Visual Basic. That's Alt F11. Okay, so what I've got here, I've got uh, item information. We've got item macros. These are all the macros that are associated with the item. Those are already here. That was written in part of a prior training. So like I said, if you want to check out that prior training, it's the mobile inventory manager. There's a lot of part. QR codes, that's what we're going to focus on today. We're basically going to write three different macros. It's going to be really simple simple one macro is going to run our colors one macro is going to generate our code to generate this single QR code and the other macro is going to run it's going to generate QR codes for all of these okay so what is behind this macro what is the engine that's going to run this and that's a really great API from a website that I'll use and it's called QR code generator QR code generator and it's a great API and it's relatively simple and that's why I love it so much this this one uses a website now there are ways to generate code within the application but it's a lot of coding obviously not something um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that and I'm going to include it inside this workbook. So that means you're going to have more than one way of generating uh, QR codes. You can do it inside Excel, but it's a very detailed, very complicated macro. So it's not something we want to go over in a training, but I'll include it. It does exist, but there's it's less limited. This one is great because you can customize it. However, the only drawback, it takes a little bit of time to generate because it's actually making a call to the internet and then it's coming back. So it does depend on your speed, but what you can do is once you generate you can save the picture and then you don't need to use it you don't need to generate it only one time so that you know it's not something you do very often or well, maybe only when you create a new item or you update the item name okay so what's behind this basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a call to this web this particular API and that's what it looks like a QR code and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this link right here and then we're going to put the question mark and then I'm going to put the size and our size is variable then I want to put the data. The data would be just whatever text you know that we're going in here. The data, of course, in our case, is going to be this item name right here. That's our data. We're going to add a little bit more onto that. We can customize even more. That would be the, just for a very basic QR. But of course, this is Excel for freelancers. We go beyond that. So what I want to do, I want to add colors. I want to add sizes. I want to give lots of details. So how can we do that? We can even do colors. So we can add colors with this. This is kind of a basic screen here. There's more documentation called here API command. If we take a look at that, we'll get into a lot of parameters. If you really want to get into this you can there's a nice little explains a lot quick start guide what kind of parameters like what kind of limits the the minimum character count is one the maximum is route about 900 characters or so it's not specific to that some best practices certain sizes obviously minimum would be 10 by 10 maximum would be 10,000 I think I don't care all right so uh, it's a lot let's see what is that one that's actually 1 million Maximum is 1 million by 1 million depends on that, but we're going to keep it way lower than that We're going to just create a basic uh, Here's some good examples of that and so basically you can read this sheet I don't want to read it all to you, but you get the idea There's tons of, I'll include this link somewhere in the description down below or in the application itself download the application It's free. So just make sure you use the links in the description below whether you're Facebook or email Okay, great. So that's what we're getting it from. That's how we're going to generate it So what I want to do first is I really want to give the user 
user the ability to set those colors up, right? I want to I want to be able to customize the colors because the API allows us to change the background color. It allows us to change the QR color. How can we do that? Well, let's do it. Let's give them the choice to show this. So I'm going to write a macro for that, and it's we're going to call this simply uh, set color. So sub set color. And I'm going to assign this entire macro to every single shape in that. And that means I'm going to, it's all grouped together. As you see, it's all grouped and there's individual shapes inside this, each shape. So basically, when I assign a single macro to this group, that macro then gets assigned to every single shape inside that group. And that's really what I want. So first of all, what I want to do is I want to know with the active cell value, we can use active cell or of course we can use uh, sheet three, but I'll use active cell because that way it's easier for you to, you don't have to rewrite the code too much. Active in case you put it on a different sheet. Active cell dot value is equal to, this is going to be really easy, active sheet dot shapes, right? What we want is I want to know what is calling it. What is the color, right? Application dot caller that means that's the shape this is the name of the shape that's calling it the name of the shape right so what do i want to know I, I don't want to know the name of the shape i want to know actually the fill and the four color i want to know the color of that shape notice that every shape had a different color so i want the fill and then i want the four color dot rgb and i want to put that what do i want to put that i want to put that in the active cell so if I select it, and now I, I think I actually, in a prior sample, I've already assigned this macro. So let's just copy this, take this, right click, assign the macro, and it's already been assigned. Set color, click OK. And now if I click this and click this, there, it's 255 or 154 automatically. Obviously, we need to do more. We need to close this. I need to write a little bit more. We don't need this, this color palette open, but that's going to get us our color automatically. So see how easy that is? All we're taking is the, all it's taking is whatever we click, it's going to take that and it's going to put whatever the fill color is of that shape and it's going to put that number right in here. But I want to do more. I also want to color Ds. I want a visual. In other words, we don't know what, by looking at this number, we don't know what color it is. But it, it's nice, I want to put that color right in D. So let's do that. Let's do that, let's continue on with our macro. So active cell dot offset, means I don't want the exact cell, I want an adjacent cell, offset dot, and then a row offset, I want the same row. So we're gonna keep that as zero. And I want the column offset one to the right. So it's gonna be one, left would be negative one. Dot interior, color I want to color the cell interior dot color equals what is it equal it equals the same thing that we just did it equals it right here this so all I need to do is copy this and I'll fix that and then paste it here okay so active cell offset there's no dot there okay there's no dot after offset okay offset there we go okay so Active cell offset equals the active shape. Same thing. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take in that same color that we put the number in and I'm going to put it right in the interior color of this. I'm just going to change it to the interior color. That's it. And the last thing I really want to do is just hide that shape. So active sheet dot shapes. And then what is it? Color palette P A L A T T E. I'll probably spell it wrong. Dot visible equals MSO false okay let's give it a try so basically that's what i want to do now let's give it a try and so it's going to hide it and there's a little bit more we have to do but i want to select it and then red perfect and then um okay so great so that worked but now we've hidden it so what i want to do is i want to display that color palette but i only want to display it if the user selects c3 or c4 now that's on sheet selection change so how do we do that we're in the setup screen that's setup sheet and we're on selection change so we want to go worksheet selection change now if not if the user makes a change to some fields what fields have we just discussed we just discussed either it's going to be c3 or c4 so let's write that in c3 or c4 if they make a change to one of those make a selection change to one of those then what do i want to do i want to display that color palette so then shapes again color palette in this case dot visible equals mso 
true, right? If they select it, else, what is it? Else they, it's gonna be false, right? We wanna hide it. If they've selected anything else, I wanna hide it. So else, based, and this is gonna be false. Else hide it, okay? That's all we have to do. Let's try that now. Okay, so we've selected something. Got this green, nice, that's what I want. Okay, the back color, let's set the back color as white. Perfect. And let's set the front color as maybe something like a blue here. Dark blue. That's good. With a theme. Okay, great. Our QR form, we're going to set that to 150. 150 pixels. That means right in here, I want to put it right around 150 by 150. In our QR table size, I want to make it much smaller. We have a list. I want to put those QRs 50 pixels by 50 pixels. So when I generate those QRs, I can generate them here. Great. All right. Wow. It's already 15 minutes out, I've got to rush. I don't think I'm going to complete this in 30 minutes. I talk too much. Okay, now let's go. I, QR code macros, we've got the set color. Now all we need to do is write the macro that's going to generate our QR code. So let's do that. Sub generate single QR code. Just the single one is all I want to do on this one. Okay, and I want to I want to dimension a few items because we have to dimension there it's going to be a picture that we're creating so we're going to dimension the qr pick as string the qr url as string and the data as a string qr data qr data as a string okay and also i want to make sure the four color and back color strings four color as string and the back color back color as string okay great so the four color and back color as a string now that's all the strings but i also want to know what the size is let's dimension the qr size qr size that's going to be long as long because we remember we have those variables set up already in our setup screen so we have the qr variable as the size and now what i want to do is with sheet one we're going to focus on sheet one the first thing I want to do is I want to delete any QR item that might be there. We're going to give it a specific name. So dot shapes and then QR item pick. That's the name we're going to use automatically for that QR item pick. I want to delete that because if we're generating a new one, we want to delete the old one. But if it doesn't exist, it's going to create an error. So we're going to do on error resume next. Remember, I use auto hotkey to automate my typing. It's quick. It's easy. I'll provide a training on that very soon. I think it's been suggested. I think it's a good idea to show you exactly how I do that. Okay, and on error resume, go to zero. So that's going to do that. Uh, that will delete the picture, the current one, if there is any. Okay, so continuing on, we also want to know what is the data? What data do I want inside that? I'm going to choose this data here. Of course, you can use anything you want up to 9. I'm just going to choose E6. So we know that it's dot range E6. So we're going to call it QR data equals dot range E6. That's going to be our item name, also known as QR data. Okay. So we've got our QR data. What else do we need? We need the size, and that's going to be on a different sheet. Size is going to be equal to, and that's going to be on our setup screen, sheet three dot range, and that's going to be in C5. C5, remember, C6 is the smaller one that's going to go, C5 dot value. That is going to be our large QR size. Okay, then that, that was set to 150. Okay, so we've got our QR size. Now all we need is our four color and our back color. So let's set that up. So our four color is equal to, okay, let's just copy and paste this. And in this case, our four color is going to be located in C4. C4 is our four color. Four color is in our QB. We also know that we just call it QR. Let's call it four color, a little bit more detail. So it's QR four color and the back color, here. QR back color, call that. A little bit more descriptive. Okay, so we know that that's located in C4 and we know that our back color is located in C3. So let's just write that up. C4, four color and back color. We're gonna need more than that though. I'm gonna change this to back and then we're gonna change this to C3. Okay, but in actuality, our QR code cannot read, it can only read hex values, and this is not a hex form. So we need to convert it into a hex form in order for our URL to read it. And for So in its current form, in this current number form, it's not gonna be able to, we need to convert it to a hex. So how do we convert it to a hex? Well, we can use write and then hex to do that. So it's just a two-step process. So let's do that inside that. Okay, so the four color, 
I'm gonna make sure we're gonna use the right of in fact we're gonna use the right of just go zero 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 because I want five zeros and that's gonna set us up the right five zero two three four five because I want the right of and and the hex right we want to add that hex of what this in this case hex of c4 and then what I want is the hex comma right and what is the length six I want six six characters okay that's it okay let's continue on so that's going to get us partially but now let's continue on to get us the full hex value four color equals right again but in this case what do we want I want the current four color in its current form after it's been converted four color two I just want the two right the two last ones on the right and what I want I also want the mid form because we have to break it up into three different parts the left the right and the middle so how do we do that and the mid of the four color in this case starting at three and the length is going to be two characters and what do we in this case left the left of the four color and then the length is two so that's going to separate into three different parts and give us that hex value we're going to do the same exact thing for back color same exact thing so all we need to do is copy this and paste it and of course we're going to get rid of that change this to back color for these two back in fact here's a quick little way back and then back again and also back here and then in this case what you another way you can do is you can just do find we're looking for four color and we're going to replace it with back color and that's only in the selected text back color using control f and replace all okay so it's replace three that's another way to do it as opposed to retyping it and i just want to update this remember this is not c4 this one's c3 okay so basically what it's going to do is going to take that number convert it to a hex value using um, the right functions the mid functions and the left functions going to get us our exact values that we need and put it into hex form because it is the hex form that is going to be read by the api now we're ready to build our link and what is that let's take a look we know we, we're looking inside the api we know what is the basis of it we know it's going to be this right here let's copy this and then build out the rest okay so back into our code our qr url is equal to and then we must put the parentheses and but we're next we're going to put in data i want data i want data after that data is equal to what's data equal to and of course the qr data qr data we've already defined that and what else and then i want the size right so then and parentheses in this case and inside the link right and inside the url not only and this and combines combines our variable with our text string this and is inside the string we need that inside to come to let the api know that it's a different part okay so then in this case size is equal to end quotation and of course the qr size qr size and of course it's time qr si size as two remember it's times times so we need to and again in this case x which means the times like vertical times horizontal and again qr size one more time qr size okay great what else let's go in additional and let's go to a next line here and so now that we have the size size by size we can i want to add the character set right we want to specify a character set that's going to help to make sure it's the right so and the character set is minus the source character set dash source this is recommended by the api equals the utf so it's in their recommendation so i'm following those utf dash eight okay because that's the character set and also one more the target utf we need to specify that as as stated by the api and the character set dash target dash equals utf dash eight ecc equals l <laughs> okay we're done with that that's going to cover the character code just to make sure there's no errors and what are we now we're ready for the color and the color what is the color It's going to be the four color so the color is equal to and the four color and that's already been converted to hex and of course the next one is the background color and 
and the quotation marks. Again, inside and we're separating it, and this time it's BG color equals what? Well, of course, it equals the back color. Back color. Oh, Got to have the and there. And back color. Okay, what next? And we have more to do. What next? I also want, let's say we just add the margins, the basic margins here. So let's do that. The margin and margin, because that's also an option inside the API, equals, just put a zero. And the Q zone, whatever that means. <laughs> so in, equals, I could look it up. Equals L equals one and the format equal to PNG. All right, that's it for our link. Now we've created every, everything. And next up, what we're gonna be doing is we're going to insert the URL into the sheet. Now that we have it, all we need to do is insert. So again, let's do this with sheet1.pictures.insert. And now we just need to insert the Q R U R L. Okay, so now with that, what do we need to do with that? Well, we need to sign it in name. That way we know we can delete it. So the dot name is equal to Again, the same name that we just deleted up here. It's, it's going to be right here called QR item pick right here. And I'll just copy and paste this in here. So now we have our QR name in our there. And so once we have that, we can then position it. Where do we want to position it? Well, basically, I want to position it right in here in this box here. So it's going to start out in, let's just say, M8 uh, and then all the way down here. M8 is probably a good a good or M, let's put it at M7 and then we'll drop it. M7 will drop down a little bit. M7 is probably better. So let's position it right there. So the name pick is equal, but I want to put it in the middle. I want to put it, I want to center it in M. So what I want to do is I want to get the width of M and then I want to get the width of our QR, which is 150. And then I want to divide the space between the two of them by two. So how do we do that? That way it's going to center it automatically. So dot left is equal to sheet one dot range m7 dot left plus right plus because we're moving it over a little bit plus in this case parentheses sheet one i want to know dot range m let's just use m1 basically i want the width of column m is really what i want width of column m minus the width of the particular picture dot width Take all that and divide it by two. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add it. We're basically going to take the width of the column, subtract out the width of the shape, and then divide that by two. That's gonna create us equal spacing on either side. Okay, great. So now all we do is put the top position and then we're done. Dot top is equal to sheet one dot range M7. Again, M7 dot top. Okay, and then a little bit lower, so plus let's say five plus five okay so that's pretty much it now in case there's an error sometimes there's errors or or, or we do want to add on error go to but not correct not just yet let's test our code first before we add on error go to next so before we do that all right so let's save it as we always want to do and then let's go ahead and take this macro and assign it to our button that we've already created that's a group button here this button here right click assign macro paste that in Okay, very good. Now let's run our code, check for errors in the party picture. All right, we don't need a space here. We don't need this space. That's not going to help us. Let's reset this, try it again, run it again. Application, take a look. All right, it's generated there. Perfect. Just got to get that left possession right, but that's exactly what I want. Now our code is generated. Okay, let me just update the left. There's probably some math in there. Plus, this should be minus, not equals. I mess that up all the time. Okay. Let's now let's run it again. All right, that looks great. Now we're done with that. And now all we need to do is ready to run our put our QR codes in our item list. All we need to do is pretty much copy and paste this and then run a loop. So let's do that. Let's create a brand new macro. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to call this sub batch QR code. Okay, sub batch QR code. That's good enough for me. I'm going to copy and paste everything in just going to paste everything in just as I did. But now what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little bit more to long because we need to run the last row. I need to know basically what the first row is. I need to know the last row of the items. I need to check if a QR code has been generated. If it has not, put it generated. And if it has, 
uh, then just skip it. So first thing we need to do is last row, and we also need to loop through each row. So let's dimension those rows as long. So we have the QR sub. We also need the last row as long, the item row, specific row, item row as long. Okay, and that's it. And then I want to actually uh, dimension the QR shape because I want to see if it's there. QR shape as a shape because what we're going to do is we're going to run a test. Because what we're going to do is we're going to run a test to see if it's there. Okay, so with sheet one, of course, this time we're going to focus on sheet two. So we'll get rid of that. And we just need to update any of the sheet one issues. So our QR data is actually not going to be in E6. It is going to be in A. What do I want to put in here? I'm going to put in whatever is in A and the row that we're on. So I'm going to put that. I'm going to update that A and the item row. Of course, we're going to run the loop. That row doesn't exist. We don't need this. But right now so we don't need that anymore so let's first of all let's get our last row last row is going to be what equal to i just used auto hotkey for that equals dot range a and the last row that's going to get us the last item row last item row and just one caveat if last row is is less than four then exit sub there's no data nothing we can do okay four our item row equals, it's going to start off in four, and our first item row is located right here in four. So four to last row. Okay. And now we have to close our loop. I'm going to close it all the way down here. Next item row. So the first thing what I want to do is check, does the QR code exist? So what we're going to do is we're going to assign a specific name to the QR code, and it's going to be very easy. We're going to make it the same, so each one's going to have a different name. So it's going to be called item QR and then the item row. So that's what it's going to be. So let's write some code to see if it exists first. So we can do with set the QR shape equal to dot shapes item QR and the item row okay we're going to set it but if that doesn't exist it's going to create an error so we need to do on error resume next and then on error go to zero here and that's going to just in case so if there's doesn't exist so now what we can do is we can check to see if it exists if not qr shape is nothing then then that means it exists right then it already exists we don't need to create it if it already exists then go to next QR and all we need to do is just skip all the way down here and right under the next one just put in next QR and then with a colon there that's going to skip all that if it already exists no need to create one if it doesn't exist if it exists already okay so now we have we have our data our data is going to be in column one we we know the QR size QR size actually is going to be changed right we want the smaller size and our smaller size is located right here in six so it's c6 we just need to update that c6 okay so the color the background color that's not going to change the url is not going to change everything the pick the name is going to change though so the name and we're not with sheet one we don't want to insert on sheet one in this case we want to insert it in sheet two so we've already so let's just put sheet two we're going to insert the qr and our name is going to be a little bit different so our name is going to be dynamic because we have one different one for each name so our name is going to be this should be QR, not WR. QR, item QR, this is basically what our name is right here. So we can just copy this. So our item name is going to be this, okay? And so item QR and item row. So this time we want to position it, but obviously we're not going to position sheet one. So we do need to update that to sheet two. Where do I want to put it? I want to put it right here in column L. I want to put it, but again, I want to put it in column L. I want to center it in column L. And then I want to move it down a little bit at the top. So we're going to do that. So again, in this case, it's going to be sheet two L and the item row dot left. And then the column size is going to be L. I want to know the width of L1 or any L and any row numbers. Fine. Sheet two L. I want to know the width of that. So that's it. And I want to do the same thing. All, all I want to do is just put the top and then plus, I guess, not quite five, maybe two, a little bit down for that. So in this case, the top position is going to be L. And the item row top plus let's say two okay good i think that's almost it pretty simple and just in case what i want to do here is i want to set the qr to nothing just to make sure it's cleared out each time set qr shape 
equal to nothing. Okay, let's run this code, let's save our work, and uh, let's go ahead and copy this macro and assign it to that group of buttons here. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna right click, and then I click Sign Macro, and I'm gonna paste it in there. Okay, and now let's run our code, see if there's any errors. Great, and there we have it. Now they're all appeared. It takes a little time though, it depends on your internet connection, okay? So keep that in mind, when you do a lot of them, if you've got a lot of them, it's gonna take quite a while because each one's gonna call. But uh, it gets done, and then of course you have to do it. All right, that's great. Now let's, uh, uh, gener let's run this again, it should be very quick. Perfect, see how quick it is? Nothing happened because, uh, let's delete one and then run it again. It takes a little bit of time and then it's there. Excellent, wow, that's great. All right, in this training, I've shown you how to generate. We're a little over the 30 minute, but we got close enough. Better than three hours like one was. Okay, generate batch code. We'll show you how to generate batch numbers of QR codes. We've shown you how to customize the background color, the front color. We have also shown you how to generate them in a large for a specific item and showing you how to create a really cool pop-up color palette and setting them. All right, thanks so much. I want to try to make this little quick one so we can get in lots of value in a shorter time. All right, thanks so much. We'll see you next week. I appreciate everything you're following. Thanks again.